Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, and delighted you've been able to tune in once again. Now, before we get started, don't forget to give us an old like, subscribe, or follow the channel, depending on where you're watching. And if you like an old podcast, we're pretty much in all the podcast players. So let's jump into our top four stories here in Thailand today. And the first one is Chuit takes triad evidence to the Prime Minister. Whistleblower Chuvit Kamavasit is going to formally present information about the police officers involved in recent corruption cases, most involving online gambling, Chinese grey businesses and bribery, to Prime Minister Priyat Chanacha. Mr Chuvit will hold a press conference at Government House later today after the Cabinet's weekly meeting, although he said he was not expecting the General to make an appearance. The former massage parlor tycoon made the announcement on Monday after meeting with Deputy National Police Chief Police General Surachat Hakparn at Nan Luang Police Station to discuss charging triad leader Yu Ng-Z with violating the Computer Crimes Act and Section 112, the less majest law. He said he filed Section 112 complaint to protect the reputation of the royal institution after pictures emerged earlier that showed Mr. Yu had taken pictures with influential ties, including members of the royal family and the prime minister, and then uploaded them to social media to dupe people in the UK and China to make bogus investments. The charges under the Computer Crimes Act, meanwhile, came after Mr. Yu was named in Mr. Chuvit's expose of grey businesses. The Chinese businessman has called the claims rubbish. Mr. Chuvit also revealed more information about Mr. Yu, including his suspicious visa extension, the establishment of the illicit foundation, and the gathering of the Hong Kong Macau triad known as 14K. Mr. Yu has had his retirement visa extended in Chambury using an abandoned house in the province as his address, while in reality he spent almost all his time living in Bangkok, according to Mr. Chuvit. Mr. Chivet found that the house was used as an address by Mr. Yu's foundation, which has at least 600 offshoots in Kanchanaburi alone, and prompted him to send a letter to the Internal Affairs Ministry. He also questioned whether the illicit foundations owned by Bai Jiaohui, one of the members of the 14K on Sriwara Road, is an illegal gangster gathering point. According to Police General Suratat, if the gathering is of 14K members proved to be illegal, as well as the two separate counts, then he would be blacklisted from uh, coming into the country after he had served his term here. Move Forward MP Rang Saman Rome, who got the information from Mr. Chuvet, revealed Mr. Yu's identity and outlined the allegations against him during a House debate on Wednesday. So this is going back, I mean, I think it was October or November when all this started to come out. And it all stemmed from somebody making complaints about noise coming from what they said was an illegal nightclub. The police raided the place and found, I think it was something like 100 Chinese nationals inside, all high-end drugs, etc. And then it just, it kind of spun out of control. And this is where they are now. Thailand does have a problem with Chinese gangsters and something needs to be sorted out. They have been probably aided by state officials because you wouldn't be able to get away with this kind of illegality without that help. So, I mean, let's hope things start to improve. I mean, it doesn't look good for Thailand at the moment. I I don't know if anybody remembers, not so long ago, the Chinese uh, embassy had asked the Thai government not to name the nationality of uh, criminals because they didn't want basically shame coming on their country or people thinking that they were from China which is very very strange and most people now know so but the um, government seemed to have not taken that advice and are continuing to name these people which is a good thing of course. Now moving along Priyat hints at house dissolution in early March. Prime Minister Priyat chan cha indicated today that he may dissolve Thailand's House of Representatives in early March. Speaking to reporters at Government House, he said he was briefed this morning by Deputy Prime Minister on the do's and don'ts for a caretaker government in the event of a House dissolution, an indication that such a move is around the corner. I informed the Cabinet meeting that the House will be dissolved in March and that the election date will be in accordance with the timetable set by the Election Commission, that is May 7th, he said. When pressed by reporters as to whether he plans to dissolve the House in early March, Pryor said it will be around that time. Priot declined to give a specific date but said that the timing should give MPs enough breathing space prior to a general election. If the House completes its current term on March 23rd, would-be candidates are required to have been members of a political party for at least 90 days to qualify to run in the election. In the event of a House dissolution, however, the required party membership period is only 30 days. 
Pride is now a member of the United Thai Nation Party, which will nominate him as its candidate for Prime Minister, and it is in the process of luring MPs from other parties. A House dissolution, therefore, would facilitate the defections. So yes, uh, we're just waiting to get the final word, but it looks like the next Thai general election will be May 7th this year. Assuming nothing gets in the way of it, of course, but who knows. Now, moving along, the Thai health minister says no to 4am pub closings, except in tourist areas. The Minister of Public Health, that's Anathan Sharvakul, is against a proposal to allow pubs to stay open until 4am. Uh, currently it's 2am, as a matter of principle for public welfare and safety, Public Health Minister Anathan told us a meeting of the board of the Thai Public Health Promotion Foundation on Sunday. He also said, however, that the ministry may agree to allow pubs in certain major tourist destinations to operate until 4 a.m. on a case-by-case basis, adding that the ministry will try to maintain a balance between social and economic aspects so no harm is caused. The Ministry of Tourism and Sports wants pubs in tourist destinations such as Phuket and Pattaya to stay open until 4 a.m. to attract tourists. He disclosed that road accidents during the 2023 New Year's uh, Eve festival dropped by about 20% compared to last year, thanks to the cooperation of all parties concerned, including the Thai Health for their road safety campaign. The minister also said that he was instructed the disease control department to coordinate with the Royal Thai Police and Customs Department Department and the enforcement of the law concerning e-cigarettes. The Thai Health Promotion Foundation was also instructed to step up its campaign to educate the public, especially young people, about the dangers of e-cigarettes. Despite claims that e-cigarettes are less dangerous than traditional cigarettes, uh, Anuka said that he will never allow e-cigarettes to be legalized here in Thailand. So yep, the old 4 a.m. They're still pushing on about it. I remember we were talking about this God, it must have been a good year, year and a half ago, and still nothing done about it. Now, yeah, currently the closing time for a lot of those clubs in, in Pattaya and Phuket is 2am. Though, based on a post I saw recently in the Phuket Andamania News, which is kind of like a Facebook news site, they had a guy standing in a nightclub who was, uh, I think he was there to complain, basically, and he had his watch turned around showing that uh, the place was full and it was something like 4.30 in the morning. So, I mean... The 4 a.m. probably doesn't mean much to any of these places anyway in a lot of these tourist areas because they're already open at 4 in the morning. Maybe not in Pattaya because they have a very good police presence, but I think Phuket certainly seems to have no police presence in the likes of Bangalore Road and places around that. So they're probably open well past that hour. It probably needs to be addressed and will be, I think, eventually when the police are embarrassed into actually having to do their jobs. But that generally is what's going on. Now, also, the e-cigarettes thing has been going on for a while. E-cigarettes and vaping, let's put them together. Um, for people who are coming to Thailand, it's just let you know, e-cigarettes and vaping is illegal here in Thailand. Regardless if you walk around and you see them in shops, etc., you're an easy prey for the police if you have one on you. I saw a guy recently, or a woman I think it was, on a Facebook page asking, can they bring their e-cigarette to Thailand because, you know, they need it. They need it. And, I mean, the amount of different answers that people are giving are, oh yeah, it'd be grand just putting it in their bag. And others saying, no, look, the, the answer is no. It's not okay to bring it with you. The bottom line is, if you get caught at the airport with it, you're in line for a pretty big fine and it'll also be confiscated from you. And really, is that how you want to start your holiday off on your way to Thailand? I mean, the truth is you can buy them here in Thailand. They're available everywhere. But again, I wouldn't be standing on the street smoking one because, as I said, you're easy prey for, you know, the tourist police or the regular police to come over and say, sorry, that's illegal uh, and give you a fine a fine on the spot or you know even have to take it as far as going to court with it so yeah i mean just use your your common sense if you're gonna bring one i guess you know privately smoke it somewhere where you're not seen but don't be doing that in public and because the bottom line is they are illegal here in thailand and it looks like they're going to be illegal for quite a while and finally russian man and his wife have been fined ten thousand baht each for riding jet skis in the protected crabby waters A Russian husband and wife have been fined 10,000 baht each for riding a jet ski in a protected marine area off Kohang, Krabi. The couple said they were unaware that the area was off limits. Officers from the Krabi Marine Office fined the couple on Sunday and this was reported by the Krabi Office of the Public Relations Department. The office reported that the act was an offence against zoning and environmental protection measures in Krabi province, prohibiting activities such as riding jet skis or parasail rides in specified public beach areas, the report said.
The provincial policy focuses on ecotourism that does not affect nature and the environment, which has been practiced continuously for many decades, claimed the PR crappy report. The Russian husband and wife were confronted by the officials when they came ashore. The 47-year-old Russian man told the officers that he and his wife had no idea that jet skis were banned from the area. He explained that him and his wife had travelled from Patia, towing the jet ski by car, while travelling throughout southern Thailand. Officers confirmed that the two jet skis were registered correctly in Patia, the report said. So firstly, you know, ignorance at the end of the day is, is no excuse for breaking the law. Uh, I actually I think it's pretty well known that in Krabi you're not allowed to ride jet skis. And other provinces also too have this same kind of rule. Panya province also are very strict. There is no jet skis allowed in the water there. And Krabi, as I said, a lot. Phuket, certain areas in Phuket. But of course, in Phuket, all rules are broken up in the air. You know, it, it makes no difference. There's nobody there to actually enforce the rules and regulations. They seem to have just given up these days. And I'm actually going to go into a show about Phuket in the next couple of days because I think it's worth talking about the dramatic changes that have happened there over the last six months since you know tourism has started to come back again I think it is worth talking about for people who are living here and for people who intend to come here on holiday to know what you're getting yourself into when you arrive here in Phuket but nevertheless at the end of the day the fine is the fine the law is the law and it's good to see that the Krabi officials are taking uh, the law seriously down where they are But anyway, that's it for today. And that is all we have. Once again, thank you for tuning in and we'll talk to you in the next couple of days. Have a great day and stay safe out there.